Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the apps that just make my iPad better than Mac OS. There are quite a handful that whenever I'm on my Mac doing any type of work, I just feel like I'm hamstrung because the apps, the functionality is better on my iPad. Before we get started, I'll tell you there's two ways to support the channel. Number one is to go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale, where you can support the channel. Number two is to take one of my Skillshare courses, and you can find that at curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare. Right now we have one on Tick Tick, and we have one on time blocking that is coming up. Buckle up. First app that is just a must have that I regularly miss on my Mac is Shortcuts. It's just not there on the Mac at all. Yeah, and there's some apps like Hazel, there's some apps like Keyboard Maestro, there's Automator, there's Apple Script in there, and they do automation, but it's just not as nice, not as easy uh, as Shortcuts is. And like even before there was a Shortcuts, I tried all of them multiple times, and it always just felt like a pain in the butt. Um, the only thing that has decent automation that I use, that I actually use is Alfred has some workflows that I use. That's it. Uh, outside of that, like I have lots of automations and shortcuts for like duplicating projects in Tick Tick. There'll be a video on that one. Um, how to convert my Markdown documents out to Google Docs to send off to my writing clients. How to build packing lists for my kids for things like it's. There's so many things in shortcuts that are there that is when I'm on the Mac trying to even like put up a blog post for my site, it's a pain in the ass. But next up, IA Writer. So there is a Mac and an iPad version of it, but. I always just find something about the Mac version harder to use. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's harder. And maybe it has to do with how it handles the file window on the left hand side. But like moving a file from one folder to the other just feels harder on Mac, which seems silly. I mean, it's got a, a better air quotes, a more traditional better finder. And yet it still feels harder to use on Mac OS than it does on iPad OS. For some reason, I much prefer IE Writer on my iPad f for everything, not just for the, like the focus on a single thing, but I just prefer it. My task manager of choice is Tick Tick, and it's like it's literally just missing features on macOS for some stupid reason. The templating features that they say that they have in their like features list don't exist on macOS at all. And then most of the templating features are like a task with subtasks. And, and that's not how I work. It's just far better to have the shortcuts way that I run on iPad OS that duplicates like a whole set of tasks and then I can get the subtasks in there easily. I, I like, I don't know why they don't have feature parity. It seems stupid. That's what it seems. Now, the second thing I really like about it is the today view on iPad where I can actually resolve the appointments as they come up, the different calendar items. I can resolve them on my iPad and I can't do that on Mac OS, so they just stay there cluttering up the view all day, which is no fun. Next up, kind of two apps. It's Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. So not for every thumbnail, but for most uh, thumbnails, I got to go into Affinity Photo and it's just better. Like, and I know there's one on the Mac, but I haven't actually tried it. And I actually got away for a long time. Um, I haven't edited photos really on my Mac in a long time. I dropped my Adobe subscription like I don't know, years ago, <laughs> years and years and years ago, I haven't had it. And I'm quite happy to not pay Adobe anything because their service is terrible and their apps are really buggy. But Affinity Photo on my iPad, just it works. Affinity Designer, when I need some, you know, a little bit of a vector graphic, it just works. It's easy to use. I love them both. I really hope the only Affinity app that I use on my Mac is actually Affinity Publisher. There has been some hints in some live stuff that says that's coming to iPad. And once it does, oh my, I will just use it on the iPad. I'll buy it a second time. I don't care for publishing like trifold brochures that I do for my wife's job for her or my daughter likes to do some printed, like she likes to write and illustrate books and I will put them together for her so that she can have like a printed copy of it. And we'll even put some on Amazon soon. The second photo editor that I use on my iPad is Darkroom. It's more akin to Lightroom if you've heard of that or use that with Adobe's software. It's good for like color correcting photos, for doing some cropping, for applying some filters to it to get certain looks. Mo all of my photos, really, uh, all the photos I use for thumbnails go through that first because it's just so easy to use. And then I don't have to worry about Lightroom. I don't have to pay Adobe anything. Finally, in my media editing apps, there is Luma Fusion. 
it's every video you've seen for me in the last like number of years has been out of Luma Fusion. Before that, I did some that weren't on my iPad, but it's been a long time since I've done those. It's excellent for video editing. Uh, I run Bruce Free for audio denoising. Um, and every time, so like I do some screencasts on my Mac too, but when I do those, I actually record off my camera like I'm doing now, and then I record the screen on my Mac. And like, I'll bring my 4K footage off my camera, stick it on my iPad, and I'll have started rendering the screen flow stuff already. And then I will take that into LumaFusion, I'll pull the noise out, I'll denoise the audio, I'll re-render it as like a single 4K file with the denoised audio, and I'm still waiting for like the single render of uh, the screen flow to go. And all that screen flow, it's probably screen flow a bit. I've got a, you know, a fairly new Mac mini. Yeah, I bought it in early 2019, mid 2019, right? It's got a lot of RAM. It's got the i7 in it. It's fairly fast, but it just takes forever to render things on Mac OS. And so then I put everything together and do all like the final edits on my iPad because it's just so much faster, so much easier to use. On the consumption front, music and Sonos, they work better on out of my iPad. Like that's it. Um, even when I'm video editing, you might hear a little bit of music in the background. If you're like in my office, I have some light music, usually some chill hop or something pretty mellow for that time. But air playing from my iPad over to my Sonos one gen two, it's got the Amazon device on it. Then we'll say its name. So it'll start talking to me. Um, it just works on my iPad and coming off my Mac, there's always issues with AirPlay lag. It just never works. So I only, if I'm wearing headphones uh, on my Mac, then I will use the Sonos device. Otherwise I just play it off my iPad all the time. And my iPad sits you know, off to the side, even when I'm working on my Mac and I will just play pause from the screen of the iPad because it doesn't work on Mac OS very well at all. A while back I did a, series on RSS readers and Unread 2 was my winner. Ever since I found Unread, it's been like the reading experience I which to judge all other reading experiences by. Because uh, it's just stellar and there is no version of it on macOS. So what I ended up using there is I use Net Newswire, but I never like it. I always want to be reading RSS on my iPad because it's just such a ni much nicer experience there. It has stellar keyboard support, Unread 2 does. It's got good gesture support. It's beautiful. It's just not, it's, it's the perfect app. If you're looking for an RSS app, go for Unread 2. It's excellent. Now, one big app that I didn't mention that I really feel, um, as one, an app that I feel pulls me back to my iPad is Blink Shell. Despite coding on my iPad quite regularly, what I do is I SSH or I connect to a server and then I code on the server with Vim with everything set up on the server. So I don't actually feel like I'm missing anything because I can do the same on iTerm on my Mac and either way, and it's just the same environment when I'm there. Now, I, I do kind of miss the better screen real estate that I get on my Mac. Um, there's some other developer tools like accessing databases that just don't exist uh, on iPad really at all. Um, but ultimately, Blink is a great app. I love it. I like coding in it, but it's not. One where I'm coding on my Mac, I think, oh boy, I wish I was on my iPad. In fact, that's probably the opposite. And I will do a video coming up on the apps that I think are just better on Mac OS. That's it. If you like the video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you love that you subscribe and hit the bell so YouTube lets you know what happens. And to support the channel, there are two ways. Like I said earlier, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale to support the channel, or you can go to curtismchale.ca slash Skillshare to take my course on TickTick and just watch my upcoming course on time blocking. Have an excellent day.